So you know how sometimes you learn something in high school, then you go to university, and it turns out everything you learnt was wrong? Yeah, sorry about that. We lied. But there's a good reason we lied. Because it's complicated. Like, really complicated. Division by zero is a very tricky thing to set up correctly. But it is possible. And it's about time we mathematicians come clean and confess the truth. A lot to cover on this deep dive, so I'm going to split it across three videos. In part one, this video, we'll start with a quick review about the two major problems that make division by zero so difficult in the first place. At least with, you know, standard arithmetic. But then after that, we'll take the plunge into the abyss, beyond the standard arithmetic, into new and exotic number systems, featuring infinity, and even beyond infinity. We will uncover the hidden machinery within and see exactly how these number systems are able to get around division by zero. Specifically, I'm going to show you a simplistic approach called an extended projection, and that'll be it for part one. But parts two and three? Oh yeah, we're going to go all the way and construct something called a wheel algebra. Yeah, a wheel algebra. If you've never heard of this before, you'd better go put your socks on. Only problem is, this level of math is very advanced, usually reserved for second year uni students and beyond, and even then, most won't ever come across it. So I'm going to have to find a way to explain wheel theory using only high school level geometry and algebra. Oh my god, this is going to be tough. Like building a house with a toothbrush. And finally, I think I'll also talk about one of the biggest misconceptions in maths. Perhaps even the biggest, that even professional mathematicians get wrong way more often than they should. So yeah, anyway, motivational intro over. Let's -a go! We'll start with 1 over 0. What is 1 over 0? Let's try to figure it out. Let 1 over 0 equal x, therefore 1 equals 0 times x. Now think, what numbers satisfy this equation? Well, none, obviously. At least no real numbers, anyway. Alright, but what about beyond the real numbers? What about infinity? Ah, infinity. Might seem reasonable at first, but sadly doesn't work. Suppose it's true. Let's multiply both sides by negative 1. Okay, but now I will move that minus sign from that 1 down to the 0 underneath it. But negative 0 is just 0, of course. So we end up getting back 1 over 0. And therefore, 1 over 0 equals both infinity and negative infinity. Mmm, yeah, that might be a problem. We'll come back to that. But let me show you another issue with 0. Consider this extremely complicated equation. Now I'm going to take this 5 and move it over to the right-hand side. And I'm going to take this 3 and move it over to the left. Next, I will take out a factor of 3 and 5 from each side respectively. And now both sides have a common factor of 1 minus 1, so cancel that away. 3 equals 5. <laughs> oh man, I love this proof. It's completely wrong, of course. Mistake is in line 4, right here. 1 minus 1 equals 0. So when we cancelled away those 1 minus 1s, yeah, we were secretly dividing both sides by 0. But hey, still, it gets everyone at first. <laughs> 3 equals 5. Funny story, actually. When I was 16 years old, still in high school, I wrote this proof on the blackboard one day, and I just left it there. Next day, we all come in and sit down for class, and everyone was just staring at it for like 10 minutes, like their whole life was a lie. Ha ha ha. Uh, anyway, the key thing to take away from all this is, yes, division by zero breaks maths, but it's actually more subtle than that. How it breaks depends on what we're dividing by zero. In the first proof, we tried to compute 1 over zero and found that it's equal to both positive and negative infinity. But in the second proof, we messed around with zero over zero and got 3 equals 5. And obviously, you can make any number equal to any other number in the same way. So in a sense, the real problem with 1 over 0 is he just can't decide whether he wants to be positive or negative infinity. It's like he's having an identity crisis. But 0 over 0 is an entirely different beast. 
0 over 0 just straight up breaks equality entirely. I like to think of him as a black hole. If you get anywhere near 0 over 0, he will suck you up and annihilate you into a thousand little pieces. Those are the two major problems with division by 0. 1 over 0 having an identity crisis, and 0 over 0 the black hole. So, let me ask you a question. Which of them do you think is going to be easier to fix, easier to tame? 1 over 0 or 0 over 0? If you said 1 over 0, yeah, that's correct. So that's what we're going to do next. We're going to tame 1 over 0 using something called an extended projection. Don't be afraid, it might sound scary at first, but I promise it's actually simple. In fact, the real downside with an extended projection is it's too simple. We can use it to tame 1 over 0, but not 0 over 0. So yeah, for the time being, we'll have to leave 0 over 0 behind. We'll come back to it after. Extended projection. We begin with the standard number line, and we pick up both of the ends and start curling them upwards. We curl them up all the way over into almost a circle. This is the projection part. Okay, next we introduce a new number called infinity. Yes, infinity is a number in this context. Not just a concept anymore, it's an actual number. And we join the two ends together at a point using our new number infinity. And that's the extension. We are extending the real numbers to include infinity. Extended projection. That's it. Told you it was easy. So how does this work mathematically? Well, when it comes to standard arithmetic, nothing changes. You know, 1 plus 1 equals 2, 3 times 4 equals 12, 10 divided by 2 equals 5, etc. All of that stays the same. But using this new number that we've constructed, infinity, now we can also say 1 over 0 equals infinity. And surprisingly, it works. It works because the problem with 1 over 0 is he can't decide whether he wants to be positive or negative infinity. But that's fine now, because we've curled the negative and positive infinity onto each other. In other words, they are the same. That's right, in an extended projection, negative infinity equals positive infinity. Uh, wow, okay, Red, that's kind of weird. I don't know, man, it doesn't really make sense. And you know what, to tell you the truth, I actually agree. It doesn't make sense to call this infinity. Okay, fine, I'm sure it works mathematically, but this is not really infinity. Infinity is supposed to be really large, larger than anything finite. But this number, you could just as easily say it's less than anything finite. So is it really meaningful to still call it infinity? I don't know, man, I'm kind of on the fence on this one. Some people say we should call this unsigned infinity, and they write it as infinity with a bar on top. And you know, I kind of agree. I like this better. But I digress. I am not here to judge. This is maths. We can name our definitions however we want to, and the great minds of the past decided to call this number infinity a long, long time ago, and now we must all uphold their decision for the sake of conformity. Negative infinity equals positive infinity. Alright, what else? To get the full picture in one go, we need the following six definitions. Number one, any number plus infinity equals infinity. Fair enough. Number two, any number times infinity equals infinity. Number three, any number minus infinity equals infinity. Now this one might surprise you a little bit. Shouldn't it be negative infinity? Ah, but don't forget, positive infinity and negative infinity are the same here. It's an unsigned infinity. Number four, any number divided by infinity equals zero. Yeah. Number five, infinity divided by any number equals infinity. And finally, number six, Anything divided by 0 equals infinity. Ah, okay, so 1 over 0 is infinity, but 2 over 0 is also infinity. And pi over 0, and negative 10 over 0. Any number divided by 0 will always be infinity. Hey Red, wait a minute. What about 0 divided by 0? Didn't you say we can't do 0 over 0? But according to this, 0 over 0 equals infinity. And then we can multiply both sides by 0. But by the second definition, 0 times infinity equals infinity. So, 0 equals infinity? 
Huh? Oh, crap. I forgot. Yeah, this doesn't work. Sorry, my bad. I forgot about the exceptions. The exceptions. So these six definitions all have exactly one exception each. For number two and number six, exception is when x equals zero. And for the remaining ones, exception when x equals infinity. Yeah, or in other words, what this really means is each of these expressions over here is undefined. Infinity plus infinity, zero times infinity, infinity minus infinity, infinity divided by infinity, and zero over zero. Oh, what? Are you serious? Man, this is a disgrace. This is garbage. I am very unhappy now. Although, it is a bit surprising. Maybe you've noticed as well, these are the very famous indeterminate forms from calculus. Hmm, yeah, I don't know. I guess some things in math are just so fundamental, they reappear everywhere. That said though, it's not a perfect match because of that first one, infinity plus infinity. It might seem weird. Infinity plus infinity, surely that should just be infinity again, right? Ah, but remember, in an extended projection, positive and negative infinity are the same. So infinity plus infinity is indistinguishable from infinity minus infinity. And that's the problem. That's why it doesn't work. Okay, one last thing. I've been calling all this an extended projection. But this is actually only one special case of an extended projection. In general, you don't have to start with the real numbers. You can do it with any number system. In particular, the complex numbers. Now, I ain't going to show you how to do it with the complex numbers. But not because it's hard, but because it's actually exactly the same process. We start with the plane of complex numbers, then we project the plane onto the surface of a sphere, and to get the point at the very top of the sphere, that's the point at infinity, which we get by extending the complex numbers using the exact same six definitions right here on the left. Blah blah blah. The point is, with this sphere, we can divide any complex number by zero. Except for zero itself, of course. Yeah, and this sphere has a special name in maths. It's called the Riemann sphere, named after Bernard Riemann. You know, the Riemann hypothesis? Yeah, that guy. <sighs> That's it for extended projections. Now you know how to divide any number by zero, except for zero itself. But that's not really satisfactory now, is it? Might as well stick to standard arithmetic if we're going to have exceptions. No. Either we go all the way, or we don't go at all. No compromises. Ooh, okay, well in that case, we need to create a little something called a wheel algebra. Part 2. See you there.